Okay, let's go ahead and get started, everybody. We're on a little bit of a timeline here. We've got, into, we've got about an hour, actually 52 minutes to do uh, a two-hour workshop. So we're going to move along fairly quickly. Uh, Elisa and Shannon and the rest of the crew are going to be circulating, helping out. One thing I'm going to ask you to do is as you complete steps, don't look at your computer, look at me. That way I'll have a feel for where everybody is. If your head is down over the computer, I'm going to assume you're working on it. So we're going to talk about screencasting. Screencasting, in, in my opinion, is this great way to get lecture content out there. Okay, so if you're using those complex visual slides, you can actually record your presentation in a visually interesting way. So just real quick, I got a couple of disclosures we have to go through. Uh, I don't have any conflicts of interest, but we are going to be talking about specific products. We are using Camtasia. That's because, well, it's free. And so everybody could download it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, talk about that. Okay. Um, so here's our agenda. You know, what is screencasting? We're going to talk about equipment software, how to capture the screencast, how to edit it, how to make it cool, and how to upload it into the uh, wide world of the Internet and distributing it. All right. Um, so let's talk very briefly about what is screencasting. It's simply capturing what's on your computer screen, recording in it, and then distributing it using, you know, a service like YouTube, Vimeo, or Viddler, or something else. Tons of uses in emergency medicine, tons. Everybody wants to jump right on that education bandwagon, but you, medical directors can use it to talk about the new procedure on the EMR. You can use it for a lot of different stuff. In terms of equipment, you really need a computer. I recommend a computer with two screens because that's helpful, a laptop with an external screen. That's helpful when you're actually doing the recording. Presentation software like Keynote or um, uh, PowerPoint. You're going to need a microphone. I highly recommend either a USB or an XLR microphone. The USB is plugged directly into your computer. The XLR microphone, you actually have to plug it into an amplifier. But a nice big microphone. I'm not endorsing this particular microphone. I like it, though. The Yeti made by Blue is a really nice microphone that's pretty straightforward and simple to use. You're going to need screencasting software. We've downloaded Camtasia. There are others um, that are out there. One is called ScreenFlow. And then uh, Adobe, I always forget the name of it. Captivate. Um, I don't use Adobe Captivate because it costs about $700. Very expensive. And then you need a quiet space. One of my favorite quiet spaces, honestly, is my bedroom closet. You close a door, it absorbs all the sound around you. All those clothes are a great place to record. You don't get echo and a bunch of other stuff. So bedroom closet is a great place. So let's talk about how to capture screencasts. This is where we're going to get the meat and potatoes of how to use uh, ca or, um, Camtasia. All right. So to capture your screencast, we need to open Camtasia. Okay, and by the way, if you're watching, this is going to be an area where we're doing the demonstration of what you need to do. All these videos on your right-hand side of the screen were made using Camtasia. So this is kind of a preview of what it can do. I need you to open Camtasia and the presentation software and then open the demo file. And this is done by going to Help and Open the Getting Started project. So go ahead and do that now. project and then go to help yeah I just hit on uh, by, uh, hit unlock or continue to draw right there there you go and then you can hit no we don't want to update and then just click on help and then open show open getting started project right there okay so this is a getting starting project as you guys finish up your tasks just let me know we're going to take a quick tour of the Camtasia software and the different parts of Camtasia software. First, at the bottom, we have the timeline. When I talk about timeline, look to the bottom of the screen. That's what we're talking about. And in the timeline, there's some different parts. Okay? We've got the playhead. That's that big kind of pentagon shape. Not pentagon. Uh, yeah, pentagon. Trapezoid? I don't know what it is. It's some kind of geo. It's, it looks like an upside down house. It's a pentagon, <laughs> theoretically. But it's not. Anyway, so that's the playhead. Okay, and if you grab the playhead and slide it back and forth in the timeline, you'll see the video changing up top. That just shows you that the playhead is, is movable, okay? We also can go down into the editing tools. The editing tools are up above and surrounding the playhead, okay? And we also have these two zoom things. This zoom button, these two zoom buttons change the zoom of the timeline. So if we adjust the one on the left, it shrinks and widens the, the horizontal component of the timeline. And if we change the one on the right, that shrinks and widens the horizontal component. 
So go ahead and fiddle with that for just a second and get a feel for it. All right. And then we have some editing tools, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, split at clay, playhead is an important one. Just remember where that one is. And then show the entire timeline. So if you get super zoomed in and just need to see the whole timeline, click on the magnification button. It'll scale the whole timeline into one view. The piece that we're looking at where your video is playing, that's called the canvas. Okay. And there are the playback controls right there at the bottom. And this little thing here is called Squip Crub. Squip Crub, I tell you, it's been a long day. Quick Scrub. If you want to move through your timeline halfway, you just grab that dot, move it halfway along, it'll automatically move your timeline to about halfway along your presentation. Quick Scrub. And here on the left, we have the tool bin or the toolbox. We're not going to get into a whole lot of detail on that right now. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and record something. I'm going to show you how to set up your record. So before you do it, I just want to show you on the screen what this looks like. Okay? You're going to click the record button. It's going to show you some different options when you do that. It opens up this window. What monitor do you want to use and some other options. And then you will eventually click the start recording button, but don't do it yet. Let's go through those recording options. The first one on the left is the computer screen. When you are using multiple monitors, you can use your computer to show you your presentation build with your presenter notes. And on the other screen, have the presentation. And you can tell Camtasia which screen you want it to record, obviously the one where the presentation is going. But using two screens allows you to see what's coming and also record the presentation. I always record the FaceTime uh, camera, the little you know, talking camera on the computer. The reason I do this is when I make a mistake, I'll wave at the camera. And what that allows me to do is very quickly scrub through and look for those waves. And I know that's where I made mistakes and I need to do editing. You can also just hold up a piece of paper or something. This uh, option right here is which microphone you're going to use. You're going to use a built-in microphone in one case, or you're going to use your uh, microphone that you brought with this. And this allows you to set the sound levels on the microphone and then system audio. Do you want it recording the system audio or not? If you have an embedded video with sound, you need to turn that on. Make sure you turn off all of your messaging uh, dings and all that stuff. And the easiest way to do that on a Macintosh is just turn the computer to do not disturb. And that way you won't get all the messages and mail sounds that always play on our computers. Okay. First thing we're going to do is set the microphone level. The reason we need to set the microphone level is there are two ways to have the microphone set up. I'm going to not make this loud, but you'll get an idea. It's either like this where the microphone isn't picking up anything. Or it's like that where it's too loud. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to be that loud. So we want to set the levels of the microphone. Now our sound engineer in the back, who I just blew his ears out, and I am, I am very sorry. Um, he had set my level to where I had this microphone so it was pleasant, and then I just screwed it up. But what we need to do is set that microphone level. And this is what it's going to sound like. I hope the sound plays over the speakers here. So I can one, just. Two, three. Test. One, two, three. Notice Test, there's a change to gain three. using this slider. Test. One, two, three. It gets louder Test, and quieter. One, two, three. What I want Test, you guys to one, do two, is to go three. ahead and set your microphone levels now. What you're going to do is we want it to see, see where it says minus 35, that's too quiet. Minus 15 is a little too quiet. We want your voice to be as close to zero as you can get it without it going over. Test one, two, three. Okay, so go ahead and do that now. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. It's going to mute me for a little while and let you guys do your thing. Test one, two, three. 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 And guys, if you don't have a microphone, you're not going to do the recording right Test now. That's okay. One, two, three. Test 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 
Test one, two, three. That's right. Test like one, that. two, three. Test one, two, three. Okay, go ahead. Test one, two, three. You may not have this selected for. Test oh, you don't one, have two, a. Three. Yep, Test you have a microphone. One, two, three. Just use that Test PC. one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. So we need test to go through one, two, three. Test one, two, three. three. Different. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test Hang on. one, two, three. Do you know where the test one, two, three? Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test I'm gonna one, find two, somebody who can help you. I just can't because I don't know. Uh, okay, sound. Here you go. Three. Good. Test one two three. 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 Yeah, it says it's not. So you're going to end up using your mic, your your uh, your computer to record, which is fine. I don't know how to set it up for you, but the way you can. Test one two three. Test one two three. Test one two three. So if you get close to your computer, you can go ahead and set your level. Test one two three. So I'll move it a little closer to you, and just kind of bend down towards it and talk normally. Not so close. Test one two three. Same, and we can Test one two three. Test one two three. Right. right there. Test one two three. Okay. Has everybody been able to set their uh, levels, sort of, kinda? Maybe a little. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. While we try and keep going, are we ready to move forward? Okay, so I'm assuming you set your microphone levels. If you haven't, don't sweat it. It's going to be okay. Um, so let's talk about recording your talk. What you're going to do is what we're eventually going to do is you're going to open up a PowerPoint presentation on your computer, and you're going to basically give the presentation to your computer. It's not that difficult. But we want to keep the microphone the same distance from your mouth. Okay, and you want to speak in a relatively level tone or level volume of voice. Like before, if I move the microphone around, the sound quality is going to sound really weird to the audience. Okay, speak slowly in an even volume, like I just said. If you make a mistake, wave at the ca camera or something, just keep going. Because what we're going to do is you just want to record that whole thing. We can go in and edit out the parts where you made a mistake later. But if you're constantly starting and stopping your project, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Just record the whole thing in one take. And if it takes you five or six times to get that slide exactly the way you want it to be, so be it. Just let Camtasia record, and we'll clip it out after the fact. OK, and like I said, just wave at the camera, back your presentation up, pause, and then keep going. OK, here are the steps to recording. This is how you record on Camtasia. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that everybody's going to do this. Set up your presentation software, i.e., go ahead and open up your presentation using PowerPoint. And guys, if you don't have a presentation, build one, like how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It only takes a couple seconds. You need three slides, tops. This is just a demo of how it works, OK? So open your presentation. Get it all ready to go, but don't start your presentation yet. You're going to click the record button in Camtasia. Then you're going to configure your recording like I just did. You're going to select your screen, all your, all your audio outputs, and then you're going to press the Start Recording button. When that happens, you're going to then go ahead and open it, select your presentation software and play your presentation. That's going to put it in slide mode and start presenting your slides. And then just start talking like you normally would during your presentation. This is what it's going to look like. Watch the video on the, on the right here. Oh, and when you're done with your presentation, stop the recording. So here we go. You're going to go up and press the Record button. Okay. You're going to s set up your screen and everything else that you need to do, all your audio and such. Now you're going to press Start Recording. You're going to go to your thing, start your PowerPoint. This is just a talk I gave. It's going through the slides. I'm talking, I'm talking. Now I'm done. I press Escape. I come down here to Camtasia, pull it back to the front, and then press the Record button again. That will stop the recording. Okay. This, this video will continue to loop, but I will stop talking. If you have any questions, just stick your hand up in the air. We'll come by and see you.
the recording when you're done, just don't root your computer anymore, look up here, find the game. forward I think yep let's go ahead and move forward so now what we've done is we finished recording our presentation you should actually see your recording down in your timeline okay and so we've we've done the recording oops we've had a little change here good deal okay now what we're going to do is get into the meat and potatoes of what's really fun about Camtasia is it allows you to edit your presentation so we're going to do a couple of things here real quick so editing your screencast First thing, we're, you know, we can, we can import different media in the timeline. Did everybody download the media folder? Okay. So there's the media bin, and that's this toolbox here, and then the media bin is up there at the very, very top. If you want to add content to the media bin, you just press the little plus button at the bottom. It's highlighted up here on the screen with the red arrow. And you're going to import uh, all the media that was included in that media folder that we sent you a link to. Uh, should be a song and a video. I think that was it. So go ahead and add that content. Um, and then what I want you to do is we're going to pull the different media into the timeline. Now your presentation should be on track one. You're going to actually move it to track two and you're going to pull that video into track three. So this is what it looks like on the screen. So we're going to add the media this way. I'm going to hit import. It shows up in the media bin. We're going to go ahead and drag that sound file into track one. Now that the, the, your presentation is probably already there, so you can actually just drag it up to track two, and then you're going to pull that um, ASAP logo video into track three. And I'm sorry I don't have an SAM logo. I just forgot to do it. So just pretend that we're at ASAP. All right, so go ahead and pull your media into your talk. Put your presentation on track two. And the way you do this, you just click on your presentation and pull it up to track two. And then pull that music to track one and your video to track three. All right? Are we finding success with this task? Everybody? Sort of? No? Oh, you don't have the right codec? What did the track say? 
Oh, that's funky. What are you trying? Go ahead and show me what you're doing to get that. Oh, you're trying to record. And it's not letting you record. I don't know. That's something to do with Camtasia. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I've never seen it do that before. Okay. Has everybody else pulled in their various media and plopped it on the timeline? Anybody still working on that? They need a couple more seconds here. Good. Looks like most people have gotten it. So let me just show you wh what we're going to accomplish next. And what we're going to do is do a little bit of narration and insertion. We need a space before the presentation because I just don't want the presentation to start. I want to be able to introduce it and tell you how awesome I am and who I am and maybe my email address or not, whatever. But you want to do a little bit of a presentation. And so what we need to do is we need to make some space in front of that presentation and give you room to do the narration. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to record a narration and put it on track four. Camtasia allows you to record narration. You don't have to leave the software to do it. It's just it's a simple audio recorder in Camtasia. So what you're going to say is hello from JetEM. Okay, and what we're going to see how we're making a little bit of room here, we're making a little bit of room. I'm going to record the narration using the, I'm going to say something. It, when you hit stop, it'll actually show up in track four, it should. Uh, sometimes it drops it in track two, so then I'm just going to move it to track four. Okay, so again, moving the presentation to the right to create a little bit of space, going up to my media or up to my tools and clicking on voice narration, record my narration, just say hello from JetEM press stop. It'll automatically drop it in the timeline. In track two, move it up to track four. your voice narration there. Yeah. But oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. the so just drag all that stuff. Yeah, so well, that's okay. Just drag it mm -hmm. to the left. And go ahead and put it, yeah, up there is fine. So, and you can okay, delete those other bits. So okay. just real quick. Is your sound on? Uh, yeah. Click up here to get your playhead in the right place. Just up on the timeline, uh-huh. Okay, now press play. Okay, that's not it. Okay, press pause. Supposed to do. <laughs> but it's not playing for some yeah. reason. Oh, but it's not. Uh, oh, it's just really quiet. Okay. You're going to get the idea. Go ahead and pause that for a second, and you'll get the idea here. All right. Has everybody recorded their narration? Anybody need a little bit more time? Okay. Let me show you what we're going to do with this now. Okay. We're going to adjust the audio. This is what I, what we have isn't good. And let me show you what I mean by that. This is what it sounds like. If you were just to hit play right now, this is what it's going to look like. Because we need to adjust the audio. So here we go. Ready? Hello from the ASAP 2017 Scientific Assembly. So you see how that's loud? You can't hear my voice. The music and the voice start at the same time. It's kind of a mess. So we need to adjust the audio. And so how we're going to do this, and this is what we want. from the ASEP 2017 Scientific Assembly. So we start with the music, we drop the music volume, my voice comes in, then we cut the music off. Because what we don't want is, sorry, let me just skip this. Actually, let me just show you one other thing that it does real quick. Just, sorry. If you watch the video Hello here. From the ASEP 2017 Scientific Assembly. And then the music keeps going well into my lecture. So here we go, it keeps playing, and now we still have that goofy guitar music playing during my lecture and I don't want that.
But what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to music to start. It's very nice, pretty video. Duck Hello, the sound. From the ASAP 27. No, my presentation starts. Assembly. The music stops. All right. So that's how we do. Here's how we do that. First thing we're going to do is move the narration so it is at the end of the logo video. Trim the music so it only plays during the logo video and adjust the music so it is quiet during the narration and fades out. So here's how we do that. You're going to move the sound over so it starts at the end of the logo video. It do you don't start talking as soon as the logo video starts. It starts a little bit. So just slide a little bit to the right so you don't start talking right away. Okay. And then we're going to trim the music. And again, this, this video will loop. And what, right now what I'm doing, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. I'm going to let, let it loop again, and so we'll come back. Okay. So the first thing to do is go ahead and move the sound to the right, the narration a little bit to the right on the logo video. Okay. So move the narration to the right. There you go. Go to the far right-hand side of the intro music and grab the very, very end. That's going to trim it. Slide it all the way to the left so that it ends where your lecture slides start. And now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the volume of the intro music by clicking twice and Macintosh to get a dot. You need two dots. And on the second dot, you're going to pull it down to about 30%. That's called a duck. That brings the volume down. Then you go to the far right, basically do the same thing. And we're going to duck the music down to zero at the very end of the, of the sound clip. Okay. Can you click on the ASAP logo video? I have no idea. I have never seen that ever. Um, if you move the playhead, does it go someplace? Oh, it's split. Press escape. Press escape on your, yeah. Now try play. Okay. Uh, grab the playhead, the, the gray part, and move it. Okay. Now press play. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. I've been using Camtasia for years. Huh. Yeah, I tell you. Um, All right, y'all, we're going to give you about another minute or so. My goal is to get through this in about an hour or so. I'll be happy to stay afterwards until they kick us out of the room to help troubleshoot any parts you had. I kind of want to introduce you to the overall concept, though, so I'm sorry we're going so quickly. Um, okay. Most people done? Mostly? Okay, let's go on to the next bit. So one of the nice things is transitions, okay? You can tra we can actually put transitions in to make it look better, fades, crossfades, because sometimes you want to do a sharp cut, but a lot of times you want to use a transition. And I think that transitioning between cuts looks better 
Okay, but don't get carried away. Those spinning, swirling, iris, explosion transitions are distracting, at least in my opinion, so don't get too carried away. So what we're going to talk about is basically fading, and there are two kinds of fade. There's fade through black, which means the fade goes into black and then comes out of black, or a crossfade where it basically overlies the two video tracks and crosses between them. Okay? So we're going to insert a fade transition at the end of your intro video and the beginning of your presentation. So we're going to fade to black at the end of the introduction video, and then we're going to fade out of black into your main presentation. And this is what it'll look like. And I'll let you experiment with crossfade. So here's how you insert it. You were going to click on the transition, transition in the toolbox and drag the fade down to ASAP logo and then down to your lecture slides. We can adjust the length of that fade by grabbing it and sliding it back and forth. And then this is what it looks like when we play it. See how it fades to black and then the, the presentation comes up. We can also do something called the cross fade, which is where we actually fade between the two. And all you have to do is drag your logo video down onto the same timeline as your presentation and then drop a fade. And you see how it dropped it on both? And now if I want to widen it, notice how it's widening both sides. And this is what it looks like. Notice how it cross fades instead of fade through black. So go ahead and experiment with both. All right. And all we're doing here is a, is a fade. And that's under transitions. And then you'll see a fade transition. And you just drag the transition onto the timeline where you want it to go. Okay, everybody, it looks like most folks are done with this. I want to go ahead and move on to the next part, which is deleting. So we talked about how you make mistakes in your talk. Everybody does it. And this is how you delete a mistake. So first of all, I'm going to show you my mistake. This is a mistake. What I'm doing is I'm trying to drag something down and place it on the timeline, but I messed up. You see that little hiccup I had down there and then I had to move it again? 
I messed that up. I don't want that to be in my final video. I don't want that mistake. I want to go from the, the media browser all the way to the timeline and to be clean. But notice how I'm kind of moving it around and I messed it up. So this is how you edit it out. Okay, so this is the actual screen capture that I got in Camtasia and I don't like the way it looks. I need to edit out that mistake. You're going to drag the handles on the playhead to highlight your error. You'll right click and then you'll delete the range or ripple delete. And this is what it is. Okay, so I make them, so this is the presentation in the timeline. As I drag left and right, you can see how the, everything's moving left, right, and I'm showing you. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the playhead at the beginning, actually at the end of the mistake, and then here the playhead is actually splittable. Those two handles on each side, you can split the playhead apart and watch this. If you make a mistake, by the way, when you split the playhead, just press escape and it will reset it. So now I'm gonna drag, notice this is where I want the block to end up. But remember I had all that jerking and stuff down here? So as I drag that green playhead to the left, it's actually gonna rewind the video, watch. I'm gonna drag, and notice how it's now showing all the mistakes I made. Yeah, 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 and about here, I realize I could just cut it right there and it'll look like it just drops into the timeline. And so right click, ripple delete. What ripple delete does is it deletes that highlighted area and moves the right fragment to the left and plugs it all together. Now watch what happened. See how I edited out that whole thing of moving it around on the timeline? I'd like you to do something like that with your presentation. You don't have to necessarily do it, but find a part of your presentation you'd like to delete. Right. Highlight it by splitting the playhead. Right click or command click if you're, a Mac, if you're a Mac person and select ripple delete. If you select delete, what it will do is it'll take out that highlighted area and leave a big gap, which can be helpful. But in this case, uh, ripple delete is better. So two fingers or command, which is a little flowery thing. Everybody figuring out that ripple delete okay? Making some headway. Is it control? Sorry, that was command. It's a magic pad, so. Success with ripple delete. Now you can say to your friends and family that you ripple deleted today. Very exciting. Okay, we're gonna move on. Again, I'm more than happy to hang out afterwards and answer your questions until they tell us to leave the room. I do have to leave at one o'clock though, so we'll go from there. So now, one of those things that's really helpful, who hates laser pointers on screens? I hate laser pointers on screens. It drives me crazy. So why can we not use what's called a call out? Arrows and boxes and text to enhance our talk. You notice on that last slide, I had an arrow that said, you know, Playhead, playhead, watch here. Those are things called callouts that allow us to highlight what we want people to see on the screen. So this is what a callout looks like. These are the different callouts. So you've noticed that I zoom and move around in the video. You can actually zoom in and move your video. So you capture a full screen, but because you're looking at a little screen and we're used to projecting these things on giant screens, maybe you wanna zoom in on part of your talk to make it a little bit more obvious to the person watching your talk. And it's very high, helpful when you're highlighting something. And we're going to do something called a scale up and scale down. This is listed under animations in your media, in your toolbox. So if you click on the animations tab on your toolbox, you will see uh, the ability to zoom in and zoom out. Okay. And so first thing you're going to do is you're going to zoom in by making changes to that first half of what you want to highlight. And then you're going to zoom out by making changes to the second half. And this is what it looks like. So I've selected the part of my talk right here uh, that I want to zoom in. Notice how I'm moving that block down. Moving that block down, I wanna highlight what's going on down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
select animations. I'm going to scale up. I'm going to drag scale up onto the timeline, onto the video itself. And you're going to get an arrow. And as you slide that arrow around, you'll see that it um, allows you to place it. And then you actually grab the video to, hide, to move it where you want it to go. And this is kind of what it looks like once you've done all that correctly. I, I'm just showing how you can scale it and zoom it in even further if you want to uh, by collecting on the properties and then continue to reposition it to where you get it right where you want it. And then this is what it looks like when you play actually. And then you go out. Now I'm going to the right. And this is where I wanted to scale back out. And all I'm going to do is do scale down, drag it onto the video timeline. And it will automatically take it back to the 100% zoom and back to centering the whole thing on the screen. This is what it looks like. Zoom in, scale up, let go, scale down. And that's what it looks like, okay? This video will loop. Experiment with zooming and panning using the scale up and scale down. having success with the scale up, scale down. If you have any questions, this is a function you can play with. It's a lot of fun. It's very helpful. I've obviously used it a lot here. Okay. So let's go to the next piece. Uh, and again, I will be happy to hang out and show you whatever you want to see after we're done today. i got about five minutes to finish up here. So we're going to talk about annotations. Annotations are an added element of text, shapes, whatever, to help you highlight something on the screen. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a box and we're going to add text, and we can add a behavior, and we can remove behavior. So let me just show you what that looks like. Right now, we're going to add a box. So you're going to place the playhead about where you want the box to be. Or are we adding text? Let me watch the video here. OK, so here we go. This is the same video I've been editing. I want to add a box. So you have a bunch of different callouts that you can do, arrows, shapes, blurs, sketch, whatever. You can do all this stuff. But I'm going to add a box. And so I drag that box onto the top, above, just onto, onto the track above the video, just help you keep track of where it is. 
And then there's the box showing up on the screen. I'm going to go into properties. I'm going to adjust the color. I'm going to adjust the outline and the weight of the line. Okay. I'm going to add a thickness to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the box in the video where I want it to be. And this is where the box will appear on the video. So imagine right here, here's your video track. This is the box. Wherever that playhead is when, the when it hits the box is when it's going to actually display the box. Okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding a fade actually to the box to make it fade in and fade out. So it doesn't just pop in and pop out. It's going to be nice and slow. So this is what it looks like when we play the video. Press play. We got the zoom in. The box appears. The box fades out and disappears. Okay? Let that loop. I'll walk around and help you guys out with it. So where's your video track? Right, so that's across here. So if you click on the shapes, that there's the box. So you would just that's a yeah. Mm -hmm. So click properties, and that's the box. Yes, that is correct. Change the colors and everything else. This is a solid box. You'd have to go to an outline box to get the outline. Mm -hmm. box All right, guys, so let's go. We're going to move on to the next piece. And this is the last thing that I want to talk to you about. You don't need to do this right now. You need an account. But the bottom line is, is Camtasia has the ability for you to publish your screencast directly to YouTube, Vimeo, or whatever you like. The issue, however, is if you're using music, and it is copyrighted music, popular music, YouTube and Vimeo and all the other services scan your videos. And if they find something copyrighted, they're going to flag it and send you an email telling you they've disabled your video because you have copyrighted music. There is, however, tons and tons and tons of open source music. Some of it's good, some of it isn't, but you can uh, use that as well. Okay, so we're going to continue Camtasia to publish. You will publish and automatically upload. And so the way you do this is you actually go up here to share and then either choose YouTube or whatever you like, and then it will ask you for your YouTube login from login information. And when you press OK, it will automatically configure the video and upload it to YouTube. There's really nothing else you have to do. And then you can go to YouTube and get the link and put the titling on it and everything else and send it out to everybody. I think this is, yeah. And also so, before it gives us page permission. Right. Um, my preference for uploading videos personally is Vimeo. I think the quality is a little bit better. It streams smoother. Uh, YouTube, however, probably has better search support in terms of having your video searchable. So whichever you like is fine. Um, but. There you go. Okay, so that is the two-hour workshop in 
55 minutes. I know it was fast. Uh, I am more than happy to stay here until they ask us to leave the room or we reach one o'clock, whichever occurs first, and uh, be happy to answer your questions and help you continue to kind of get a feel for how Camtasia works. Any questions? Awesome, I'll be here. <laughs>